Remember at the end of this video, that in the description part there are links to find additional information regarding the topic that we are going to expose. Welcome to class number 8 of our basic chiller course, especially aimed at beginners. Those people who are beginning to be interested in specializing, in this case related to water chillers. In the previous class, in class number 7, we talked for 10 minutes about the screw compressor chiller. We have previously discussed the scroll compressor chiller and the reciprocating compressor chiller. All these chillers work with a normal compression refrigeration system, compressor, condenser, expansion valve, evaporator. Even the chiller that we are going to see in this class also works with a conventional compression refrigeration system. Let's have the four basic components. The difference will be in the way the compression process is carried out to raise the pressure of the refrigerant. Well, the time has come for the centrifugal compressor that differs from the three previous compressors in something very important. This time in the machine the compressor is not going to take care of crushing the refrigerant. Note that in the previous compressors the purpose was always to crush the refrigerant to reduce its volume. The centrifugal compressor is not based on this principle, it is simply based on the principle of conservation of energy and on the centrifugal force that a substance, a mass, gains when it is in circular motion. Then the centrifugal compressor will receive the refrigerant through its center and the refrigerant will be subjected to the forces of circular movement because the impellers that receive this refrigerant are in constant rotation. When the coolant enters through the center and is in contact with the impellers it immediately picks up speed, it begins to acquire the velocity of the impellers and the properties of motion. Between that the circumferential movement brings with it a centrifugal force. This centrifugal force is going to make the refrigerant acquire a lot of speed and we are going to increase the speed level of the refrigerant in such a way that it will allow us to increase its kinetic energy. What are we doing? We are passing the energy that the compressor extracts from electricity, we are passing it to the refrigerant in the form of kinetic energy. But the refrigeration system does not need the refrigerant to have speed, it needs to have force, it needs to have pressure, because the pressure is what will allow us. We know that the purpose of the compressor is basically to, to make the refrigerant flow through the refrigeration circuit and raise the pressure so that condensation in the condenser is easy to facilitate. And the condensation in the condenser is particularly important because it will allow us to carry out what is called the cycle. It goes from liquid to vapor in the evaporator and in the condenser it will go from vapor to liquid to convert the machine into a constant cycle. So how is this pressure going to be one? First we pass the electrical energy from the motor that the motor acquires, we pass it to the coolant in the form of velocity. Now since we already have speed, the refrigerant already has speed because it acquired speed while it was in the impellers. We are going to convert that speed into pressure. It's kind of like having a gearbox. We already have third gear but now we need to go up. So we're going to start downshifting in the box to second gear. Something like that is what we're doing with the coolant. We are going to play with the changes of our box. The changes in our box in this sense will be the area where the refrigerant is flowing. If we manage to transform speed into pressure, we will have a high pressure because we have a fairly accumulated kinetic energy. To do that we are going to put the refrigerant through a diffuser in such a way, we are going to put it through a nozzle in such a way that the refrigerant changes the speed and pressure with an increase in the area of passage. When the refrigerant meets a larger passage area, then it will happen that the pressure increases and because the speed it brings is converted into pressure. So what is done in the centrifugal compressor is to convert that speed into pressure through an increase in the area of passage of the refrigerant. If you want to acquire more advanced knowledge about chillers and industrial refrigeration plants, you can visit mundochiller.com and take our private programs for the training of professionals in the sector. Every month we are opening courses with new groups, online modality. That pressure will then allow us to reach the condenser and achieve condensation. That would be at first roughly of course from the centrifugal compressor. There are other things that we have to see and we even have to specialize in other things. We must see other important parts of this, but the most important thing is to begin to understand what the operation of the centrifugal compressor is. Getting a little closer to what we need, we are going to see that we are going to divide the chiller with centrifugal compressor into two types of chiller. Here we are going to divide it into two types of chiller. 
We are going to see it in the centrifugal chiller that uses oil and the centrifugal chiller that does not use oil in order to facilitate the study. In this part we are talking about the chiller with a centrifugal compressor that is going to use oil. As in all previous cases, we need to talk about capacity regulation. Whenever we talk about the chiller we are going to talk about the capacity regulation because it is the part that will allow us to adjust the electrical consumption to the cold production. In this case, the chiller with a centrifugal compressor will use two strategies to adapt to the partial load. You are going to use the regulation of the refrigerant flow that enters the compressor. It does this through inlet veins that can close and open to let more coolant or less coolant through. That would be the first tip of regulation. The second regulation tip would be to vary the speed of the compressor. We are going to have two fundamental strategies to adapt the capacity of the compressor to the partial load. Changing the input area to the assumption of the compressor and varying the speed. With these two parameters we will be able to adapt to the partial load. It is also important to mention that the capacities happen something very similar with the chillers that use screw compressors. If you are watching this course in sequence, in the last class we discussed that the power seen in screw compressors have dropped. That before they were medium and high powers. We can already say that we can find average powers and a little below the average capacities. This something happens with centrifugal compressors. Years ago, 20 years ago, talking about a screw compressor chiller was a chiller with a huge capacity. It was practically something of large industrial plants or large buildings. Nowadays, although we can still say that the centrifugal compressor chiller is the chiller with the highest capacity, it is also true that as new compressors have appeared, for example those designed by the Danfoss company, many manufacturers have used these compressors and has allowed the centrifugal compressor to be adapted or used in lower capacity applications than previously thought. So it is important then to mention that part that will increasingly increase the chances of finding a centrifugal compressor in a chiller. Equipment is not so hard to find anymore. You are more likely to see them on plants. So that part is important. The chillers with centrifugal compressor are chillers that acquire a very high efficiency. Because, we are going to relate from 0.3 kilowatts for each ton of refrigeration. If we are going to consume half of what a conventional air conditioner consumes, one of those that already come with high efficiencies, with inverter equipment, it can even achieve half of that consumption. That is why large air conditioning plants are looking for the chiller with centrifugal compressor. And we are going to see in the next class why we are going to divide this class. We are going to look at the chiller with a weak compressor again, but we are going to start to see the types more closely, the types of chiller with a centrifugal compressor more closely. Then we invite you to the next class.